to everyone. So last time, if you remember, we were talking about the international actors in the humanitarian sector. So today we are going to have a little view of this, and then we are going to talk about new topics, so the importance of the cluster approach in the disaster management. So let's just briefly um, review what we have done thus far, and what we were talking, especially last time. So we were talking about the international actor in the humanitarian sector, and what we say is that the biggest one is the EISC, which is uh, the International Agency Standard Committee. So this one, we can say, is kind of the head of all the other actors. Then we have the UN United Nations, that's, uh, it's clear to everybody is. And then we have OSHA. OSHA actually is the coordination office of the UN. And then under OSHA, there are all the other UN agencies. <coughs> I don't know if, um, is there anybody in class that knows the name of one of the UN agency? Think about a little bit. What kind of agency do we have uh, in the humanitarian sector? Like, how about UNICEF? UNICEF? UNESCO. 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 Oh, um, it doesn't, it's not, it's, it's one of the UN agency, but it's not really a disaster. But yes, it was a good point. So UNESCO, she said, is a UN agency, which is true. And then, uh, do you remember we were talking about um, also UNICEF, we say. Then we were talking, sorry. Then we were talking about WFP, World Food Program. Then we have uh, uh, the International Federation of the Red Crosses. All of these are under the umbrella of the UN. So this is, the, and then we have the finan financial organization, like for example, the World Bank. So last time we were talking about this, and the reason for which we introduced this is that because all of these agency and organization play a big role when we have to respond to a disaster. Then what else we have? Aside from this big system that is the EISC and UN and the East agency, we have the ENGO, as we say last time, about the International non government Organization. And then we have the NGO, that are the National Government Organization. And then we have other little small organizations that are the grassroots. All right? So that's what we were talking about last time. And uh, also what we say is that uh, what happened is that this big part actually don't look about the international NGO, the NGO, and the grassroots, but this big part, this is the core of uh, the humanitarian sector response, it's only activate in case it's required by uh, a state, because there is the principle of sovereignty. Right? Is that clear? Any questions so far? No? So it, it was everything clear. That, that's so good. So if they have if they don't have any permission from the state, they cannot intervene. So today, instead, I want to talk about the cluster approach. So look at all this kind of organization, right? So what happens is that they're there, you know, then the state say, you know, I don't have, um, I don't have the capability to respond to this disaster. So I need some help. Think what is going to happen in case a government say, okay, please, show up, I need your help. Think if, what happens if uh, all of these organizations, PNGO, actually there are millions of PNGO, a lot of NGO, a lot of grassroots. What happens if everybody show up and start to do something, whatever? Mm -hmm. And what is, what is instead the concept of cluster? What does cluster mean? A group of uh, organizations. Very good, very good. So what happens is that we have all these kind of organization, and then cluster means that we need to do something because it's not possible that all these organizations just show up in a country and start to do something. Otherwise, as Aline said, we are going to have chaos, right? Now. When a disaster happens, what we have to do is to respond. There are different ways in which we are going to respond, right? So like, 
think about one of the needs of a population. So if a disaster happened, what might be the first need of a population? Food. Food? Very good. Food. Another one? Okay, let's think, let's make a specific case. Earthquake happened, okay? Earthquake. All right. So these people, everything is destroyed. Think about the case of Haiti, right? So Haiti was completely destroyed. So these people need food. Then what else they need? It's an earthquake. Shelter. So um, they can say shelter. The same thing. The same thing, shelter. Correct? Water. Water. Medical aid. Medicine, medical aid. Okay. All right, very quickly. So all of this thing, all of this, um, all of, all of this um, element, like food, shelter, water, and health, they are paid with one of the UN agency. So like for food, we have WFP, right? Shelter, usually it's the EFRC, the International Federation of Red Cross. Water is it's UNICEF. And also health is sometimes is paid with um, EFRC. All right, so what happened is that we have UN and then we have all this agency, WFP, EFRC, and UNICEF, just to make an example. And each of these represent one of these elements, so one of the main needs of the population. Then this, and this is a cluster, that's what we call cluster. So they cluster on the basis of something. So everybody, everyone is specializing on something. And then they contract with the NGO, the NGOs, and the grassroots. All right, is that clear? All right, unfortunately we are just uh, running out of time. I'm so sorry, you know, was, uh, um, there were so many things to restate. So today we just um, introduced the concept of um, the cluster approach and uh, what we were saying is that the cl cluster approach is very important because uh, um, it helps the coordination of the aid and improve um, the the quality of uh, the response. Um, if you have any question, you are free to ask me right now. Probably I can take one minute of question. Any questions? No? All right, very good. So I'll see you guys uh, next week. Bye.